welcome to To Grow Good, a podcast of conversion stories, to share encounters with the living God, to bear good fruit, a place where others can meet or be inspired to meet God. So get cozy, lean in, and listen close. Miracles are at work, and He wants to meet you too. My name is Rachel Smith, and I'm your host. Now let's start growing some good. Hi, friends, and happy Tuesday. I am so excited this week to bring you the conversion story of Jenna McAndrew of A Shower of Roses podcast. Jenna has a pretty incredible story, as they all are, but... um, I think relatable in a lot of ways for a lot of people. She first met the Lord really after a series of encounters in high school that just basically blew her spiritual life through a a roof. Um, God made his presence so known to her and really called her on to a lot of missions in life. She's touched so many people. It's incredible to watch. Um, But Jenna also talks about how she's experienced spiritual dryness and what to do um, in your relationship with the Lord when you're feeling like that. And I think that a lot of people might be able to take a lot out of this conversation and her own journey and walk with the Lord. And so without any other further ado, here is Jenna. Jenna, hello. Welcome to the show. Hi, Rachel. I am so excited to talk to you. I am so excited you're here. Um, Let's start out. If you could just introduce yourself maybe for the audience and tell us a little bit about you and what you do right now. Yeah. My name is Jenna McAndrew. Uh, I have a podcast called A Shower of Roses where I um, explain and discuss the upcoming Sunday's mass readings. Um, And it comes out like a week ahead of time. So people have time to listen to it before, understand the readings. I try to do it with guests sometimes. Um, So that's kind of like my side hustle. Um, Full time, I'm the director of parish services at a parish in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. Prior to that, I was teaching theology for four years at an all-girls Catholic school. Um, But I just got married, so I moved and I wanted to find a closer job. So that's been really good. I've been doing that job for about... Uh, three months now. So it's fabulous. Um, Yeah, I'm the oldest of four girls. Uh, And like I said, I just got married like a month ago. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's been like a crazy ride. I know. Wonderful. Well, I was going to say before I wanted you to introduce yourself before I jumped into the fact that we met through the Lord. I mean, a friendship that he's brought into each other's lives through the interwebs (laughs) and the podcast world. And it's been awesome just to get to know other women that are passionate and that have had these kinds of experiences and have come to know Jesus and then just said yes to wherever he leads them, which is so exciting. (laughs) And I feel like that's how we met. So it's so cool to kind of be full circle now, but, um, But yeah, let's go back, if you don't mind, to if you could just give us maybe some background of how you grew up, um, Mm -hmm. whether the faith was something that was in your life, um, and if you can remember a time where you kind of had a more personal encounter with God. Yep. Yeah, I love it. Um, Yeah, so I grew up Catholic. Um, uh, My parents both grew up Catholic and... um, we always went to mass every Sunday um, growing up. And then I got more involved um, in like choir and youth group. So I, I really got into, I think my faith um, through music because I wasn't good at sports. So I went like the music around. <laughs> um, and so that kind of took me through high school. Like I was singing at mass, like very often I started singing at like funerals and weddings and joined the choir Um, But that was pretty much the extent, um, and I went to Catholic school, um, grade school and high school, um, but theology or like religion was still just like a subject to me, and like this thing that I pulled off the shelf on Sunday when I went to mass, but it, 
I never really understood that like a personal relationship with Christ was possible. And so that um, really all changed my senior year of high school. It was so obvious through these, this, there were three like events that happened that the Lord was like, you cannot ignore me anymore. Like you can't keep living this lukewarm life because mm. that's what I was doing. So he was like, you, it just, he made himself so evident. So the first thing was, um, I went on this retreat my senior year of high school called Kairos. I don't know if you're familiar, but it's very popular, especially here in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. Most high schools do it. Most like Catholic high schools do it. Um, senior year, it's a, it's a four day retreat. Um, and it's really, the word Kairos means God's time. So it's a, a retreat really about learning that the Lord is personal and lives in others. And we encounter him through others, but that he desires like a personal relationship with us. And that was the first time, like even going to Catholic school my whole life, that was the first time I had ever heard those words that Christ wanted personal relationship with me. Um, and so that was the first time I ever like journaled, which now I'm like a huge prayer journal or, um, so that retreat really changed me a lot. The next thing was that, um, so that was in like, maybe like February, March, April, I was in, um, my senior show at my high school. I did all the shows and the show was Godspell. And I don't know if you're familiar, but it's a, it's a musical based on the gospel of Matthew. It's like a, it's a movie. You can watch it. It's like super seventies, um, eighties movie, but it's, it's, the music is fantastic. Um, and so doing that show, you know, I was, I was playing one of Jesus's apostles. Um, there's really no like roles in that show. It's just like Jesus, John the Baptist, and then everyone else is just like random people yeah. <laughs> in the show. So I, it was an awesome experience because I was doing it with my friends. And then my friend, Rich, who I'm still is one of my closest friends today. That's how I met him doing this show. I went to an all girls high school. So we had to bring in guys from like wherever, or we could just couldn't have a show. So this guy walks in and he plays the guitar and he's like, so clearly the perfect Jesus for the show. So that show and becoming friends with him. And he does, by the way, he does the theme song for my podcast. <laughs> that's oh, him that's awesome. <laughs> um, so meeting him and doing that show. And then like at the end of the show, obviously is the crucifixion and the passion. And so like I had become friends with him. And then every day when we would rehearse this, I would watch him, you know, die. <laughs> yeah. And, and it got to the point where we were getting close to the show where one day we all just started like weeping when we got to this part of the show, because I think it all clicked for us. Like, this is what Jesus did for us. Like mm -hmm. he loved us so much. He was our friend and he got up on the cross and died. I have chills just talking about it because mm -hmm. like, so like doing it and acting it out and seeing your actual friend, you know, act and die, something clicked, I think. For, and for all of us in the show, like we really had this profound experience of God, of God and encountering God through that show. So that was the second thing. The third thing was that summer following Rich, my same, the same guy was like, and it was like, a, it was crazy. It was like May. And he was like, Hey, in like a few weeks, I'm going on this retreat. It's called, um, Steubenville these Steubenville conferences at Franciscan University. He's like, you should come. And he, you know, me and a few of our, my friends, I had no idea because now these events are huge. I mean, yeah. it was huge when I went, I had never heard of it. I had literally no idea what I was getting myself into. I like signed the form, wrote the check, went to like one meeting before and got on the bus. Like <laughs> I, had, I, did, I just went because like my friends were going and, you know, I had this newfound like interest in my faith and love of the Lord. And so anyone that's listening to this, that's ever been to a Steubenville conference, like, you know, what's up. It's like, <laughs> it's like you encounter Christ at these conferences. Um, it's just like, there's thousands of teenagers in a, in a gym and 
we're all just like singing praise to the Lord and then they do adoration. And the second, so the first night is like Friday night, they do adoration. Uh, And I had been to adoration before, but there's something like the Lord just shows up at these conferences. I don't even know. And I was just like, oh, like this is okay. Like this is real. Um, And then I went to, so like after they do adoration, there, there will be like 30 priests like willing to hear confessions. Oh. So I went to confession for the first time, probably since my first, probably since my first uh, reconciliation or maybe like one of my younger sisters. Um, it just, confession was never something that our family did on the regular. Um, and so I went to confession for the first time in years. And I remember like sit, <laughs> sitting down in the pew, it was like side by side. And it was this young priest, really nice guy. And I sat down and he says, you know, in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, welcome, yada, yada. I didn't even speak a word. I started weeping, weeping. And he's like, um, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I just need a minute. <laughs> and he was like, do you want a tissue? And they all <laughs> they had a box of tissues. next. And I was like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. And then I like, I was like, actually, yes, I'll take the tissue. And like, <laughs> I had the most healing, like amazing confession. I, I mean, still to this day, because it had been so long since I was going, I, I had gone and I was holding on to so much baggage when you wait that long to go to confession. It's like, you can't carry that by yourself. So, uh, and then the next morning we had mass and he, he probably didn't even remember me, but he's the one that gave me the Eucharist. So like for the first time I had been in a state of grace and like, however long, like he's the one that gave me communion and I'll never forget it. Um, And then the second night of Steubenville, they have adoration again, but the priest processes it through the aisles and down every single row. And he like sticks it in your, (laughs) like in your face. (laughs) (laughs) So when that happened and they led us through this guided meditation that is still to this day, something I use pretty much every day when I pray. Um, and it was a guided meditation of like encountering the Lord in, in a garden and he just like wraps you up in a hug. And like that to this day, that's still how I pray, like imaginatively. And like, that was the moment that was the moment of encounter that, these events and it's just so amazing how the lord works like these events that had been happening for the past like five or six months culminated in this moment of real encounter with him real encounter with him in the sacrament of adoration and through this this meditation and i was never the same after that that changed the whole trajectory of of my life um and so I was going to go to college for music education, and I did. And I, I, that's what I have my degree in. Um, but when I got to Westchester, um, let me know if I'm talking too much. No, oh, no. You're, you're, <laughs> no, keep going. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I went to Westchester University for my undergrad for music education um, because I thought I was going to be a music teacher. And I, you know, was kind of. Um, but when I got there... I, f- I went, I was like, okay, like I've had this awesome summer of like my friends and I would go to mass together and we were praying together and it was like fantastic. And I didn't want that to die, but I was going to a public university and I was like scared. And this one girl I went to high school with was going to Westchester too. And she was like, Hey, have you heard of the Newman center? I had never heard of that. I didn't go to Westchester because of that. She was like, they have retreats and they have mass. And I was like, okay, sweet. So I went there the first weekend of my freshman year and that, um, and I walked in and my, and this woman that became my dear friend, Kelly was like, like, I literally walked in the door and she was like, hi, I'm Kelly. I'm the choir director. Do you sing? And I was like, yeah, actually. And she was like, okay, you're going to sing with us in the choir tonight. And I was like, I literally am a freshman and I just got here, but okay. And I did. And I was in the choir all four years and the Newman center was the best thing that's ever happened to me because it was the place where that love, like I had fallen in love with the Lord, but then it, it developed into an actual relationship there. And like, I was very well formed. I I think I learned more in my four years there 
than I did in my 12 years of Catholic education, not to not Catholic education because I believe in Catholic education, but like that's where I really developed. So I was in like Bible study and, and a women's group. Um, and, and yeah, so it really developed from there. So that's how I, wow, that's, that's how I fell in love with the Lord. I love that story. I love so many things about your story. Just, I love how you were saying like, how he was kind of working on your heart. Like Mm -hmm. these events that happen and that we notice are not by mistake, you know, Mm -hmm. like they're happening and they're, they're softening our hearts. I love how you were kind of saying like you started to like pick up on different things that maybe you hadn't had noticed before. And then slowly, I love that part about your friend in the play and how, you realize that's what Jesus did. And he was our friend. And he literally, I love when he calls in the gospel, when he calls them, I'm your friend now, yeah. you know? And, and then, and he's like, and no greater love than this is to, to lay down one life, one life for, for their friends. And I just, yeah, it's, I, I love it so much because I think our heart obviously naturally is, is drawn to that and by that. And, then to see your friend doing that is just, there's no greater way to like connect that, you know, for yep. you, I'm sure too, at that time. And then how, yeah, by chance you get invited to this Franciscan <laughs> conference. You don't even know what it is. Nope. And like, that's when it all, you know, happens. You really meet the Lord in your, in your heart. Um, and gosh, I just love so much about that. And then how you kind of just, kept going with what he was going to give you next. And he provides, like he gives you exactly what you need to go deeper. And he, he's kind of like, Hey, this Newman center, Hey, the choir, you know, like all these things that you, that you need to go deeper. And it just reminded me right away of the scripture with, um, in John, cause I'm reading John right now. And when he sees them on the shore and after he like resurrects, and he calls them and asks them like if they have any fish. And then they come over and he's like making a fire with bread and, and fish. And it's just been really striking me how much he provides for them. Like mm-hmm. he is taking care of them. Like he tells them where to fish to be the most fruitful, I guess, if you will. And then he tells them how to rest and he gives yeah. them what they need to, yeah. to thrive. And I feel like that just kind of explained what happened to you with your story. Just, he kind of was providing you with what you needed next to go deeper and come closer uh, all throughout your journey, which I just, I love that so much. Yeah, I, I so agree with what you're, it's like with him, it's always easy. Like all you have to do is show up Yeah. and like he does the work. And I think that's really difficult for us to understand sometimes because we like to, do work and we we are in the society I think where we have to like earn what we get you know what I mean and I think that can make prayer and our relationship with Christ more difficult than it has to be because we feel like we have to do the work yes but he's he's the one that does the work yes I, I don't know I feel like he's really speaking into that for me lately just like how like I will give you whatever you need Like, that's how much I love you. I don't think you, he's like, I feel like he's kind of like, I don't think you fully realize how this works. Like, I love you. I'm going to give you exactly what you need. You just got to step into it in faith. Um, And just, I love how you can see that in your story so clearly. Um, But so then, yeah, what happened from there? I guess, like, what has been his role in your life? How did it lead you to the podcast, obviously? Yeah. (laughs) I mean, fast yeah. forward, obviously quite a bit probably, but maybe what, what were some of your biggest challenges and what were some of your greatest joys in, in cultivating that relationship? Yeah. I, so the challenge, and I'm still living in this, like I graduated, it'll be six years ago. And I, I'm still living in the space of like a spiritual I guess, drop off. (laughs) Um, And people don't expect this because they're like, oh, you have a Catholic podcast and you work in ministry. But like spiritual dryness is is a real thing. (laughs) Like just look at Mother Teresa. 
So my challenge was after college and I had been in such a fabulous community and I was going to daily mass and adoration every week. And then you leave that and it's like, okay, well now what? Like I don't have this support anymore. So like right after college, I, I went to, um, I did an internship at Disney World. They have this thing called Disney oh, College Program. Awesome. So you can go there and work. They're not doing it right now because of COVID. But um, so that was my first thing where I had been on this high of relationship with the Lord and of really holy friends and holy community. And then I went there and there was no community. There was no ministry the church that I went to is a basilica. It's not a parish. So they didn't offer any sort of like formation. Mm. And I was working all the time. So not all the time, but like, I didn't really have time for it because you, if, when you work there, a lot of the stuff is at night. I always work the night shift. So like, it was, that was the start of like real, like spiritual desolation. And it was the first time I had, I was going, like they had a perpetual adoration chapel. So I would go whenever I could. And I felt nothing. And I had been, I think, riding on the feeling, quote unquote, of my love of the Lord for, for, you know, four years. And then it was like the tank ran out and I would go to adoration. I was like, I don't feel anything. I don't feel your love. Like, and, um, yeah. So then I, you know, I, I moved back to PA and started working as a, theology teacher, which is fabulous. And I, as I was working, I got my master's in religious and pastoral, pastoral studies. So that helped me, um, grow in my knowledge of the Lord, but still not the relationship that I had with him mm -hmm. before. It's still like where I've been, um, you know, getting married to Paul, like he's such a good and holy man and so devout. Um, and so he has helped keep me consistent in, prayer and the sacraments and we go to confession together like once or you know once a month once every two months and we go to mass together and it's he helps me so I just need to keep persisting and that's what I've been trying to do and um there's no like real like happy ending not that yeah. I'm like not that I'm like sad but in this new job that I have I'm going to daily mass every day um I work alongside a priest. So like, I, I, I'm, I know that I'm doing everything that I can, you know, and like, that's enough. Like I've, I've, I'm at peace with the fact that like, I'm trying and I'm trying to pursue him. Um, and, he's and I there, went on this, and he's you know? there and he's there. And I, I'm just have to trust that he's like doing slow work yeah. on my heart. Mm-hmm. I went on this retreat this past February. There was this sister that was like on the leadership team. And so I sat down with her and I was like, look, you got to fix my problem for me. Like every religious person I sent them down, I'm like, this is my problem. Like My spiritual dryness, I, like I do not feel the Lord's love. And I can't say that I am like in love with him anymore. And she said, you need to stop putting all the pressure on yourself mm -hmm. when it comes to prayer. Like we were talking about before. She said, instead of walking into prayer and saying like, Lord, help me to love you. Like, why don't I feel anything? Like, help me to feel your love. Mm -hmm. She said, stop, stop putting the, the work on you. She said, sit down and just say, Lord, here I am. Love me. Let me know your love. So it's not me doing the work. It's him revealing yeah. himself. That's and that's what I do. And I'm just trying to push, pursue that. Yeah. You know? Wow. Yeah. No, it's super interesting. I think, I think sometimes, yeah, we can, I almost, I don't know if this is theologically true. I have no idea, but I almost think of it as like a plateauing or a, yeah. you're, still, you're still growing, but it's like you surge so much in the beginning. Right. Now it, you're like kind of, it's like when you're like hiking and you like get up to the first half of the mountain, you just like do it real quick. And it's like, this is great. All this stuff. Then you get up to like the second half and it's like steeper and you're going slower mm. and it's harder work and you don't really feel great, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah. then like when you get to the top, like that's, you know, when you reach the next kind of level, I guess, is when, you know, but I don't know. That could just be... 
that's me what I'm equating it to in. hiking, but or uh-huh. like like anything else, you know, it's like when you level up in a game, you're at a certain amount, and then like it's like you just can't, you know, get more. Sometimes he's calling you deeper into different yeah. things. Like I know my brother at least, he wakes up and goes to three a.m. adoration. But like that's where he feels the Lord has called him. Right. And that's where he can like connect with the Lord. So right. like I just I feel like he might be calling you into something deeper and different or I don't know, but I totally agree with the sister, you know, that I do think a lot of times we get in our own way. We start to overthink it and then we think for some reason he's gone. But I I I, I definitely experience that a lot too, like an adoration, like um Lately, I feel like he's been kind of just like exactly with the gospel of John reading, like, just let me, let me provide, just let me provide, like stop putting a wall up because when you try to do it yourself, just like those disciples in that reading, they were, they went out at night to fish for themselves and they're looking where they think fish are going to be. And I feel like the Lord was just showing me like, Put your net on the other side of the boat. You know, like, let me be the one to show you where the fish are. You're not supposed to be looking for the fish, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. I do think similarly, he's, I mean, I have not experienced what you're, what you're, exactly what you're talking about, but I think similarly, he's trying to teach me that same thing right now is just, you don't have to try. You just have to let me work, you know, and trust. That's where the, that's where it really all lies is trusting that he is providing and that he is going to give you what you need. Because if you don't trust that, then it can easily be kind of like you're pulling the rug out from under him before he can even work. You know, you're kind of taking it, taking any chance of him working away because you're just thinking you're not going to show up or why aren't you showing up, you know? But yeah. But meanwhile, I also think, he is absolutely working through you. I mean, <laughs> tell me then, like, why, well, one question that came to my mind is why then, and I think this could help for a lot of other people that are feeling spiritual dryness, why do you do what you do? You know, I yeah. know you mentioned your husband and that helps, but like, why not just walk away from it all? Or why do this podcast every week? How did that yeah. come about? Um, yeah. 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 So I, I trust in that moment, like I know, even though I don't feel the same way about Jesus, I did, you know, whenever that was, I guess like almost 10 years ago now, when I had that encounter at that retreat, I, I know it was real, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I'm holding, I, I'm clinging to the fact that I know the encounter that I had with Christ was real, not just at that retreat, but at, at other moments I've, I've felt, you know, intimacy with him. Um, and so like, if that's not, I guess I cling to the fact that like, I know that that was real. And if that wasn't real, then like, there's nothing else worth, worth my, my time <laughs> in this world. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, so like in my both my like professional life and with the podcast, the podcast came about because while I was doing my my master's in religious and pastoral studies, we did a lot of work. It wasn't, I mean, it was the like we did theology work, but a lot of what we did was like looking at like why people aren't going to mass and like millennials going to mass and interreligious dialogue and all this stuff. And like some something that bothers me is, is that people are leaving the church and as church, we're not doing anything to stop it. Um, and that's something that I became kind of like fascinated and almost like minorly obsessed with is like, okay, why are people leaving the church and what can we do to fix it? So it was just on my heart was, was like the Lord. I love podcasts and it was just this thing on my heart for a while, probably like a year that like I could talk about the gospel. So this kind of stemmed from a Bible study I was in through the Newman Center at Westchester. And my Bible study, we didn't do like a programmed one like cool parishes are doing now where you like buy the book and you watch the videos. Like we didn't do that. We just sat down and we would read the gospel for the upcoming Sunday. And then we would talk about it just like I do on the podcast. So that's where the idea came from. 
So, cause I, so many people, the reason that they don't go to mass or leave the church is because they find mass boring. They don't get anything out of it. And I think that's because they're just not paying close enough attention because if you really understood the Eucharist, not that any of us can, can really grasp it, but if you understood what was happening, you would be there every week. You would be there every day if you could. So that's where the, the podcast came from. I also love scripture and diving into the, um, oh my gosh, I forget the word, but like the study of like the context of scripture. I like, I eat that up. That's my bread and butter. So I love reading scripture passages and like picking it apart. And I think I really fell in love with that through doing, doing my master's. Um, so that's, that's what was the heart of the podcast. So um, it started in uh, June 2019. So it's been about a year and a half now. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I do. I just pick apart the scriptures and I love making connections from Old Testament to New Testament. Um, and so that's where the podcast came from. So it's been cool for uh, even just totally selfishly. It keeps me accountable for reading the mass readings every Sunday, making sure I understand them and like, like doing this ministry as a, as like a sacrifice for, for offering it up to the church, you know, like for the, for the church and the members of the church. So that hopefully if people listen to it before Sunday mass, even if their mind drifts during mass, because that's my problem is that I really, really struggle paying attention during mass. Um, so if you've listened to it at least once before you got there, even if your mind wandered during the gospel, it's okay. Cause you already heard it before. Mm. Um, and, and you have that understanding of it, I guess, before yeah. you get there. I mean, my friend, you do realize that that is, that is the Lord, my friend. <laughs> oh, I know. I know it is. I know it is. That it's interest totally the that Lord. you have. I mean, that passion that you have, the fact that you've been able to do a podcast for over a year on the gospel readings alone is more interest, passion than, than a lot of people experience. Absolutely. So I do think too, like, you know, I think he works in all ways. I think, cause it actually reminded me, I don't know if you've heard Lizzie's episode, but Lizzie talked a lot about how she doesn't really feel, feel it. You know, she just, it's very intellectual for her. We were kind of talking about how the head and the heart are so intertwined that mm -hmm. like, that's God pursuing you through your head. Like the fact that you even are interested in reading like church fathers, like she's read like all these, like, <laughs> old like writings, like ancient. I'm like, that's the Lord. Cause like, I can tell you right now, he hasn't put that on my heart yet. You know, mm. I think it's so interesting. I love to see pull out quotes and stuff, but I'm not going in the catalogs and doing that every week. So I do think he works in, in ways like that and that he's growing your, your faith in that way, totally working through the podcast. Like you were saying, it's, it's, it's been a blessing for you and your life. And then also he's blessing others through it, which is just, I mean, amazing. Like I can't even, you don't get to, I feel like you don't get to see all of it. I love when we get little glimpses of it, but we won't get to see it till, you know, when we die and we get to see all the ways that what you've, the little yeses that you're giving right now, even if you don't feel it, quote unquote, are changing other hearts, changing other lives. And that's, there's what else could you ask for? You know, that's amazing. <laughs> yep. And, and I've, I've grown to be like, where I'm at now is like, I'm, I'm okay. Like I'm content. Um, I, I'm pursuing the Lord. I know he's working through me. Like you said, and that's, I'm okay with that. Like, if I am like this until I die, then that's a, like, I've learned to be okay with it. Um, and obviously I hope it's not like that. Like, I hope I continue to, you know, grow in relationship with him. And like you said, like the image of climbing up the mountain, like I do trust that I'm going to reach another level of intimacy with him. And if it's not in this life and if it's in the next, like, um, I've learned to be cool with that, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. But what have been some of your greatest joys? 
my joys. Oh my gosh. Like the Lord is, is good. And like, that's the other thing is it's evident to me through the good and the blessings and the people in my life that the Lord is at work. Um, and like, so for example, meeting my husband, Paul, we met on a dating app, a secular dating app. Like, wow. Who meets a devout Catholic? Like, um, so meeting Paul was like so weird. And the way that we missed each other, like all through our lives, cause we don't, you know, we live locally to each other and like, we would go to the same like concerts and we would go to the same like festivals and we went to the same churches, but like we have all these mutual friends and we had never met. And like the Lord brought it together at this perfect time where we were both like really committed to personal holiness. Um, like just like, I don't know, kind of like crossing this threshold of like, okay, like unchaste relationships, like not doing that anymore. Like this bad habit, that bad habit, like we're getting rid of it. And we had both come to this like on our own. And that's when the Lord brought us together. Like his, him alone, um, is just like so proof to me of the Lord's existence. Um, I would also say the students that I taught while I was teaching theology, um, for those four years, I, I miss teaching very much, not the workload, but the, the kids, I just, miss them tremendously and and um I took some of them to Steubenville actually for two of the years that I worked there um I took a group of girls to the Steubenville conference and so like seeing them encounter the Lord in adoration like I did I'm like there's nothing this is heaven so just seeing and not just said that but just even in the classroom like seeing seeing something click for them them asking really good like apologetical theological questions and like throwing away the lesson that I had for the day and just like talking for like an hour about whatever like there's nothing better than that like that's the Lord at work so he has like greatly 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 blessed me and I'm so um fortunate and lucky and um I I really could not ask for for a better life. Like he has made himself present to me through the, the people that I've encountered. So, yeah. 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 I love what you said too. It's kind of full circle to what you, that first retreat you yep. learned how he's in, he's in people and he wants to encounter us through people. And I, I just, I love that. Um, but w- what have been some of your standout influences on your journey, <gasps> whether it's a book or another podcast or mm. speaker, obviously retreats have played a role. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I'm first going to give a shout out to all the good priests in my life, like that I've encountered through the years at various like parishes and and the Newman Center and, and, um, wherever, like I have had the opportunity to meet so many awesome, amazing priests and like have good, holy, like, you know, friendships and relationships with them. And, and like, that's the been, I think one of the greatest things is like, um, and I kind of reflected on this a little bit, like a few years ago, there was, um, in Pennsylvania, there was like a list of like all these priests that had committed like sexual horrendous acts. And so like Pennsylvania was like shook after that. But I was like, as I was reflecting on that, I was like, you know what, there are these priests in my life, like uh, any priest that's ever given me the sacrament of reconciliation, like has changed me because of Christ working through them as they give you a word, you know, or some advice, like I take that to heart. I really do. So I'm going to give a shout out to the priests. Um, I love podcasts, Catholic podcasts. I love, um, I love, uh, father Mike Schmitz. Um, I love your podcast. I love the Catholic feminist. Um, uh, like, you know, just like go down the list of Catholic podcasts, Catholic stuff you should know. I eat it up. I love it all. Um, there are two girls, um, Marcia and Shannon, that have this podcast called Plaid Skirts and Basic Black, and they're Black Catholic women. And just everyone go listen to them because we need more Black Catholic voices in the church. Um, yeah, so I, any any good Catholic podcast, like I'm totally there for it. Um, Saint Therese is like my woman. So story of a soul. Read it if you have not read it. Um, watch the movie Therese if you haven't watched it and then just pray the Saint. Oh my goodness. The Saint Therese Novena, dude, that was something that had a major influence on me. And she, to this day is my absolute patroness. And I know that she 
is looking out for me all the time. Um, Wait, now I want to hear. Oh, oh, well, like the first time, the first time I did the St. Therese Novena, I had this friend, Megan. Um, I like didn't even know about St. Therese, but the women's group I was in in college um, was, she was our patroness. So that's how I kind of got to know about her. So my friend Megan was like, we're all going to do this Novena to St. Therese and you're going to pray for you know, you pray that the, the novena is like, she'll send you roses. Cause that was her promise. Right. And this is the podcast is named after her. So I prayed for yellow roses and like, I don't even remember what happened specifically, but like on the last day of the novena, there was yellow roses, like, just, like in random place, like just like random places, or I would see yellow like random yellow things and like to this day like she still announces her presence to me uh yeah yellow roses absolutely and so the last question i hope to ask everyone who comes on at the end is can you share with us one scripture verse that is either speaking to you recently or that played a foundational role in your journey to the faith and why yeah i'm gonna give a shout out to the the letter to the ephesians has been the daily mass reading for the past few weeks and like it's like rocking my my world. It's so good. Um, I don't have a specific verse, but everyone just go read the letter to the Ephesians. The verse that I've really clung to for the past few years is Matthew chapter six, verse twenty-seven, which is, "Who of you, by worrying, can add a single day to your life?" Or like some translations say, "Who of you, um, by having anxieties?" can add a single day of your life. And that speaks highly to me because so many of us have anxieties and anxiety in general. Um, and I just love that because like, I'm someone that tends to overwork and overthink and over worry. And like, that doesn't help at all. Like it's not, it's not going to do anything for us. And again, like what we've been talking about this whole podcast, Rachel, like letting the Lord do the work And all we have to do is show up like that verse, I think is always a really, really good reminder to me. Yes. That's my favorite too. That that whole, that whole Matthew chapter six is, Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's, it's just everything that you could want or need a lot of the time. So definitely go back there a lot. Well, thank you so much, Jenna. This has been awesome. Oh, I love talking to you, Rachel. Oh, it's been amazing just to hear your story and to hear how the podcast got started Everybody should go listen. It's a perfect, it's amazing. Such a great idea. Thank Clearly you. spirit driven to dive into the readings every week and get prepared just mentally for mass. Exactly what you're saying. It's like, then you go to mass and you're reminded of the reflection or what someone said. Um, and it invites you just to go deeper into the scripture for that week. And so everybody should check it out. A shower of roses. Podcast. Yes. Yep. You can find it at, on Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever you listen, or go to a shower roses podcast.com. Amazing. Thank you, yeah. Jenna. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much for growing some good with us today. Visit us at togrowgood.com slash podcast to find links to everything we mentioned in today's conversation. If you enjoyed today's conversation, would you please consider leaving us a review on iTunes or on whatever app you're listening from? Reviews help podcasts to show up higher in search results so that more people can find these incredible stories of the Lord at work. If you enjoy this podcast, please consider sharing it with a friend, a family member, or a coworker who might enjoy the conversation as well. Find us on Instagram at to grow good. See you next week.